which leads us to pH buffers. There are a lot of examples of buffers, especially in your body systems. And if you read what the definition of a buffer is, a solution that resists changes in pH when acids or bases are added to it. And frequently, a solution of a weak acid in its conjugate base. It could be a weak base in its conjugate acid, of course. But resisting a change to it is very much the same idea as Le Chatelier's principle, that if a change has been made, the system works to try to resolve it. This common ion effect that we just talked about is key in doing a control of pH. The weak acid component will neutralize added base. The weak base component will neutralize added acid. And ideally, you should make up a buffer with similar concentrations of both components. Here's a nice graphic showing you a situation that has a buffer. Here in the middle, we have something where the pH is 6.5. And if you look, you find out that there are equal concentrations of the weak acid and the conjugate base. If you add some acid to this, you are going to end up then with less of the weak base and more acid. It will become a little more acidic, but because we still have some of this weak base hanging around the conjugate base, it's still not that far off in its pH number. On the other hand, you could add some base. Now you can see the amount of base outnumbers the amount of acid, but even though it has gone up in pH a little bit, it hasn't changed that much. This is helping to maintain some sort of a balance. We can go ahead and figure out how much of the acid in the conjugate base that we're going to use to make a buffer with a desired pH. And we're going to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to help us do it. You know what you want for the pH you know for that particular acid what the pKa is. And then you can figure out what the mole ratio of acid and base would be that it's needed to reach the desired pH. <clears throat> After that, once you have moles, you can figure out the masses. You'll notice though that I said mole ratio here. I didn't say molarity ratio, even though we've said it's the concentration of acid and base that matters. Why am I able to do that? Well, because they're being mixed in the same piece of glassware. They both have the same volume. So their molarities vary exactly the same way as their mole ratios do. Now you are gonna have to look at your book for this because it says select a weak acid in a table that when mixed with the sodium salt of its conjugate base, in approximately equimolar proportions will produce a buffer with a pH of 1.75. Well, first of all, there's this word, equimolar. We should know what that means. Well, it tells us exactly what it means by the way it's written. Equimolar is going to mean that you have equal molarities. Okay, so it says approximately equimolar proportions. That was the thing where we were talking about the concentration of the acid being equal to the concentration of the base. And in that case, the Henderson-Hasselbalch formula tells us that the pH is going to be the same as the pKa. Now we're prepared to go look for the proper formula. There you go, there's your Henderson-Hasselbalch. And when the base is equal to the acid, you're gonna take the logarithm of one, that happens to be zero. So pH is equal to pKa. And as I go through that table, I see chlorous acid at 1.96. Well, okay, that's close to that same pH number, but I can probably do better, I keep going. There is maleic acid at 1.92, that's a little closer again. Oh, oh, on the other side, Periodic acid, but it's closer. It's on the other side, but it's closer. And oh, there it is. 
sulfurous acid. Uh, so out of the ones that I found, that one is the closest. It's very close to the 1.75. So I would not have very much difference between the molarities of the acid and the base. And that would meet this criteria of approximately equal molar proportions. So that solves that issue. Now it says select a weak base in table. Okay, back to your book. You're gonna have to go look at that book again and find that table in, in uh, Appendix A. So when mixed with the chloride salt of its conjugate acid in approximately equimolar proportions produces a buffer with a pH of 10.75. The pH has to do with the pKa. I'm looking at a table that's full of weak bases. So I have to mess with that a little bit so that I'm looking for the right thing. Now Henderson Hasselbach only talks about acids and we see that that table is talking about pKb values. But we have to remember pKa plus pKb equals 14, so it's okay. If I'm looking for a pH of 10.75, that would be telling me about the pKa. I want to be talking about the pKb. So I just take the pH, 10.75, and subtract that from the 14, and I'll be looking for a base that's a pKb of 3.25. Now, what I'd like to point out is how this has to do with the stuff that you already know. You already knew that Ka times Kb equals Kw. And we have a value for Kw. So if we do minus the log of Kw, it ends up being this 14. If I was taking the log of Kw, that would be the same as saying, okay, I'm going to take minus the log of Ka times Kb. Knowing how logarithms work, though, we could be able to separate this as being negative, the log of Ka plus the log of Kb, as being equal to this minus log Kw. And what that really tells us is that pKa, because minus log of Ka is pKa, and minus log of KB is PKB is equal to 14. So that's where this comes from. And this is how you would use it. So you just start looking through your, your uh, conjugate acid list, well, conjugate base list, looking for the, for the opposite. So 14.00 minus the 10.75 is gonna be the PKB that I want to look for, and that's a 3.25, and you can go looking for that and find things that are close to it. So diethylamine, 3.07. Dimethylamine, oh, that's even better. I might be tempted to stop, but if I keep looking, I'll find ethylamine at 3.25. So diethyl, dimethyl, and ethyl.